Why am I so anxious? Why do I have so many panic attacks? Why am I so depressed? I hear these words all the time, these questions all the time, and we're gonna dive into those today and how they relate to your hormones. Subscribe and hit the bell to be notified if you wanna get off the hormone roller coaster. I'm Dr. Shelley Meyer, I'm a functional medicine doctor, family practice doctor, and a registered dietitian, and I'm so glad you've joined me on my channel. If you're a woman, particularly in the ages of, between the ages of late 30s to early 50s, you're in the right place. We talk here about hormone balance, and particularly when you start to get into perimenopause, the two to 10 plus years before menopause. And we've been focusing on that in the most recent series, and we'll continue to focus on that. So today we are talking about the particular mood changes of anxiety, depression, and even panic attacks. Now I touched on this in last week's video when it can get to so such a severe place that it really wrecks your life. And the title was Perimenopause wrecks, Wrecked My Life because that is a pretty much sentiment you hear from a lot of women. So we're gonna kind of build on that today and talk about a little bit more about why. So um, basically, perimenopause can be called puberty in reverse. I don't know if you've ever heard that before. A lot of uh, doctors like me are saying it and providers, but um, there's a reason it's called that. So if we think back to when we were in um, puberty, if you remember that, you, you know, lashed out a lot, like a lot of arguments maybe with parents or friends. Um, irritability, extreme mood changes, crying at the drop of a hat. I have a, a kind of puberty child right now, a <laughs> girl, and I'm seeing all of this, so it's interesting that she's going through it the same time I'm going through it, and I've just been through it in reverse. So mood shifts can be dramatic at in puberty. Well, they can also be quite dramatic in perimenopause. So we're kind of going through in um, puberty, your body's getting ready, you know, to start have those periods so that to start having those periods in the cycle and everything that goes with it. So that you can have these swings up and down of the hormones and you can also have that in the all the phases of perimenopause. So particularly as you can see in some of my other videos, in phase one and phase two, you're gonna have the um, rising of the estrogen and then you have a gradual kind of decline of the progesterone throughout those phases. So, and then the estrogen can kind of dip down. And so then you can get some of the estrogen deficiency, deficiency type symptoms, almost like the hot flashes and night sweats. But when the estrogen is peaking and rising like that, it can create a state called estrogen dominance because the progesterone is dropping. So during those stages, you can feel very tumultuous in your mood. You can feel like you're on that roller coaster with your mood too, where you just have these mood swings. You have this, you know, constant kind of, up and down and it just doesn't stop and then you would have maybe anxiety or panic attacks a lot of people have that a lot of sleep problems as well so now you understand where those shifts might be coming through because it's the are coming from because it's the opposite of of um sorry <laughs> puberty so you're having a lot even though it's the opposite you're having a lot of the same symptoms because it's really actually the same but it's puberty in reverse because your body's getting ready to wind down. So you, in your first two or three, or the first two phases, you're more like estrogen dominant with the progesterone declining. In phase three, you are more where your estrogen's kind of getting real low and you're getting some of those hot flashes and night sweats. And then phase four is the final year before menopause where you are very estrogen deficient you're getting a lot of those night sweats and hot flashes you can't sleep very well and the progesterone is probably hitting a low as well so those are the phases that is why perimenopause can feel so dramatic let's talk about what else we can what else happens actually before we talk about what we can do about it so what else can happen as i talked about in my last videos you can also have thyroid and cortisol be more dramatically affected when estrogen becomes dominant in those first two phases of perimenopause and by the way those two phases like i've talked about in my other videos can last a couple years each so it can be kind of a drawn out, drawn out process so when your estrogen gets high, then it um, can bind to the, the cortisol binding globulin, one of the, the proteins in our body, carrier proteins, that will um, 
is supposed to be carrying the cortisol around and binding that up. But if the cortisol is taking that up, then you can have some irregularities in your cortisol. I mean, if the estrogen is taking up that receptor, then you can have some irregularities in the cortisol and you can either have some more anxiety, like high cortisol kind of symptoms where you're less able to adapt to stress and respond to it. So that high estrogen can affect your cortisol levels too. It can also do the same thing with your thyroid. It can suppress your thyroid hormone. And then you can be, your mood can be more depressed, um, more lethargic. You just don't have energy. Your sleep might be disrupted, can make those periods even more irregular. So that's another way that the estrogen works in other ways to disrupt your mood and your many other, you know, your energy levels and your vitality. So, and when the thyroid is poorly functioning, you can have lower levels of GABA, which is an important neurotransmitter to help you feel calm when you are anxious. So it helps to calm you down. So if you have less GABA, then that's contributing to more anxiety and more amped up kind of feeling. And also when you're estrogen dominant, you can have a poor COMT metabolism and that um, can disrupt your ability to have good levels of dopamine, which is a really good feel good kind of neurotransmitter. So there's multiple ways that estrogen dominance can play on the, um, on the mood. And then progesterone, as it's gradually declining, progesterone is very calming and anti-anxiety and helps us sleep and kind of mellows us out. So when that's gradually declining throughout all the phases and getting down to that really low um, level, in, per- in the end stages of perimenopause, then you can't sleep. You might feel anxious. You might get more panic attacks because simply because of the progesterone. Now, most often when the progesterone drops, especially in the first few phases of perimenopause, the estrogen's, you know, in comparison high and you have that estrogen dominance. So you have all those other things that I just talked about. So all of that in combination is like the perfect storm. So let me know in the comments down below, has your mood been worse as you've potentially gone through perimenopause. Now, perimenopause is difficult to test for. I do have a PDF um, linked down below. If you join my email list, you'll get access to all the PDFs. And that can walk you through the symptoms of perimenopause and some tests you can potentially do to kind of identify where you are. But really, there's not one test that shows you you're in perimenopause. There's just some tests that can show you're in hormone imbalance. So is your anxiety worse? Is your Are your depressive symptoms worse? Is your insomnia worse? Let me know any symptoms you're going through in the comments down below and maybe any solutions you've found because that can help other women. And ask me any questions if that you like. I can't give specific medical advice and none of this is specific medical advice because I'm a doctor, but I'm not your doctor, so I don't know you. So you really have to work this out with your provider, anything that's really specific to you. But also see last week's video to um, to look into some of the changes I said that would be very supportive of helping your mood during perimenopause. Some other things you can consider on top of those from last week's video, and I'll let you check that out to figure out what those are, is to maybe consider taking some GABA. That's a, You can take it as a supplement. Um, And that could be very calming if you're having anxiety um, during the day or at night. L-theanine can also be super helpful to calm your mood. Now, of course, discuss any of these supplements with your provider. Hopefully you have a natural healthcare provider that can help you. There's also an oral lavender, a brand I really like called Lavella by Integrative Therapeutics. And I don't have any association with them, but I just like the product. And that can, um, the lavender can help the estrogen as well as just help calming. And it's it's usually I use it for people for acute panic or really bad anxiety, and they don't necessarily take it every day because you do burp up lavender and that tastes a little bit like soap. So people don't love it. But if you're having, you know, some flares of your anxiety or panic, you can use that as long as you talk with your provider about it. Um, there, you know, you could consider progesterone if you need it, if it's safe for you, you do want to talk about that with your provider. If you're in the end stages of perimenopause, you could consider other hormonal replacement. Um, some people take DHEA and sometimes that helps if you are depressed or lethargic or low energy, low libido, but you do want to make sure your levels are low enough that you need DHEA and keep in mind that if you're anxious, having panic attacks, like high kind of cortisol symptoms, you don't necessarily want, you don't want to take DHEA because that can make all of that worse. 
So if you want to learn more about the perimenopause transition and join a group of women that are going through it and sharing with each other, um, and, and I also share on there even more tips and ways to get you through this roller coaster, get you off that roller coaster, then join my Mighty Network um, private group called Reclaim Your Hormone Health under the Dr. Shelley Meyer Mighty Network, and I'll put the, an invite to that down below. Also, check out the PDF I mentioned that lists the symptoms and the labs you can do with your provider. And then join me every Friday for videos all about getting you off that hormone roller coaster, helping you feel balanced and feel like yourself again. So like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you next week.